Good day and welcome to our online message for Pentecost Sunday. My name is Deanne Carter and I serve as a pastor of Margaretsville and Lower Granville Baptist Churches. If you're ever in the area, please join with us in person. We meet at 10 a.m. in Margaretsville and 2 p.m. in Lower Granville. I've titled the message for today, What a Difference the Spirit Makes. And I trust that those of you listening today know this to be true in your own life. As we read this account, it's been 50 days since his crucifixion and resurrection, 10 days since Jesus ascended to heaven. And the disciples are in Jerusalem where Jesus told them to go and wait. He said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Later on in that same passage, we see Jesus says, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has sent by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So they are there, they're praying, and they're waiting for the Spirit. Jesus had told them the Spirit would come, but he didn't say how or when. But as we keep reading, the Word tells us that on the day of Pentecost, as the disciples gathered in one place, the Holy Spirit descended upon them with all power. It happened in God's time and in God's way. Suddenly the blowing of a violent wind from heaven filled the house and what seemed like tongues of fire rested on each of them. Have you ever wonder why tongues of fire? It's thought that the tongue symbolized speech and communication of the gospel and fire symbolized God's purifying presence in their lives which would set their hearts aflame, making them different than non-believers. You see, it's with the, the help of the Holy Spirit that we as believers are changed and we can speak of the power of the gospel. We experience transformation. This is the first concept I want to draw your attention to this, this afternoon. This is what happened to the disciples and it was profound. They were no longer the same individuals who had walked with Jesus during his earthly ministry. The Holy Spirit had come upon them and now had equipped them with power from on high to carry out the mission that Jesus had entrusted them with. Imagine a caterpillar. That caterpillar has spent its entire life crawling on the ground. Imagine how limited it is in its movement and its perspective. But then the time comes for it to, to undergo a remarkable transformation. It enters the cocoon and by the power within, it emerges as a beautiful butterfly able to soar through the skies now. Similarly, the Holy Spirit entered into the lives of the disciples and a radical transformation took place in them as well. They were empowered to attempt extraordinary things for the kingdom of God, trusting that the spirit was working through them. Now, as we stop and we reflect on our own faith journey, have we experienced the, the transformative power of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Has he changed us? Is the spirit still changing us? empowering us to, to attempt extraordinary things for the kingdom because the promise of the Holy Spirit's presence and power is not limited to the early disciples. It's a promise that's given to all believers down through time. The Holy Spirit longs to come upon us, to fill us, to equip us for the work of ministry and witness until our job here on earth is done and we enter into heaven and eternity and we hear Jesus' words, well done, good and faithful servant. We need to be careful 
not to become complacent or stagnant in our relationship with the Holy Spirit. If we want the power of the Spirit to fill us. Now, as we keep going in this passage, we, we see the second amazing outcome of the Holy Spirit's infilling in the lives of the disciples was the boldness that they now had in proclaiming the gospel. They did not have this boldness before. You'll remember that prior to the Holy Spirit's coming, the disciples, they were timid, they were fearful, they were prone to doubt. Peter in particular, you know, he had famously denied Jesus three times out of fear for his own safety. And the rest of the disciples had all fled. But after, after receiving the Holy Spirit, their lives were changed and they became fearless and passionate proclaimers of the good news. Peter, who once cowered before uh, a servant girl's questioning, now stood before a large crowd on the day of Pentecost, and he fearlessly preached with conviction and authority. He boldly proclaimed Jesus' death and resurrection and the lordship of Jesus Christ, pointing to him as the Savior and calling all the people to repentance and faith. And the result? The conversion of thousands and the birth of the early church. Now, how about us? Have we experienced times when when we've been timid and fearful of sharing our faith with others? I'm sure we have. But what is it that holds us back from boldly proclaiming the gospel? Because the Spirit will remove our inhibitions and empower us to be a bold witness for Christ. The Holy Spirit continues even today to fill the hearts of believers with boldness. And you know, as mature Christians, each one of us has a a wealth of life experiences and testimonies and wisdom that we can share with others that will impact their lives. You see, when we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, he removes our our self-consciousness, our fears of rejection, and the pressure that we put upon ourselves to to have all the answers. And instead, he fills us with a, a deep conviction of the truth of the gospel, a passion for the lost, and a genuine love for others. He gives us the words and the boldness and the discernment to share the hope of Jesus with those who so desperately need it. We can step out in faith because we can trust in the Holy Spirit's power rather than relying on our own abilities. Thirdly, we see unity in diversity, another change the Spirit brings. This chapter, Acts 2, not only reveals to us the power of the Holy Spirit to change the individual's lives, but it also reveals the the unifying and inclusive nature of the Spirit's work. We read that as the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in different languages. And this, this miraculously enabled people from various nations and cultured cultures who were in Jerusalem at the time for the celebrations to hear about the works of Jesus in their own native tongues. This incredible event demonstrated the power, once again, of the Holy Spirit to bring unity amid all the diversity. Now, our world today, it's divided in many levels, but the Holy Spirit can break through all those barriers and can unite believers throughout the world. This is God's desire that all people receive salvation. Picture a beautiful tapestry made of of threads of different colors and textures, and each thread has its, its own unique qualities. But when they're woven together, they create a breathtaking work of art. Well, similarly, the Holy Spirit weaves together all of humanity uniting us all in a a harmonious and vibrant tapestry of the body of Christ. 
as part of his body, we can celebrate the beauty of our diversity. And lastly, another difference the Spirit made was in their everyday living. In Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47, we see a powerful picture of the impact of the Holy Spirit on the lives of the believers. In response to the, the outpouring of the Spirit, the early Christians devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. You see, they now had a hunger for God's word. They eagerly wanted to, to understand and apply the teachings of the apostles. And they now recognized the scriptures as the very foundation of their faith. They also devoted themselves to fellowship and the breaking of bread. The Spirit fostered a, a deep sense of community among the believers. They shared meals together, not just as a, a physical act, but as a symbol of their unity and their spiritual communion with one another. The Holy Spirit nurtured a spirit of generosity and selflessness, which in turn prompted them to to sacrificially give of their resources to make sure that no one, no one among them lacked anything. And it tells us they also devoted themselves to prayer. The Holy Spirit has a way of changing our prayer lives. They prayed often and they, they relied on his guidance and his provision. They recognized the, the power of prayer to align their hearts with God's purpose, to seek his will, and to experience his intervention in their lives. They knew they had to pray, and the Holy Spirit helped them do so. What a difference the Spirit made in their lives. What a difference the Spirit makes in our lives. He is the living presence of God within us. Empowering, guiding, and transforming us. Through the Holy Spirit, we are transformed. We receive power to live boldly for Christ. We can experience unity amid diversity and the ability to, to bear fruit that impacts the world around us. May you and I pray earnestly. May we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill our lives anew. Empower us to be witnesses of your grace and your love. Transform us from within, that we may reflect the beauty of Christ to a world in need. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining with me on this Pentecost Sunday. May you be blessed as you strive to serve your Lord and mine. God bless and take care.